difference between the Soviet Union's Pravda and the American media is people in the Soviet Union knew they were being lied to. Planned Parenthood sent me a cease and desist letter. They wanted me to stop. They wanted to make me scared. They wanted me to stop in my tracks. That's what I'm here to talk about today, how the government goes after uh, the messenger and refuses to actually hear the message. Point Project Veritas Edition. Who's ready to go to the gulags? Who's ready to go to the gulags? Who's ready to be raided by Kamala Harris? I'm excited. Okay. Now, Acosta Cortez says there's going to be some things happening, lists of people. They say there's going to be truth and reconciliation commissions. I'm excited. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. Say when. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. And the thing about the gulags is you can have great sex in the gulags. According to Democratic Party officials who told us that. There's a reason Joseph Stalin had gulags, right? Mm -hmm. And actually gulags were a lot better than like what like the CIA has told us that they were. Like people were actually paid a living wage in gulags. They had conjugal visits in gulags. Conjugal visits and we need to be re-educated in these gulags. Gulags were actually meant for like re-education. It was like for like enemies of the state to like learn how to not be enemies of the state and to learn like the value of like a hard day's work. Right? There, might, like, there might be uh, 200 million people that believe in the second amendment who might re-educate them if we get re-educated. But, you know, they don't think too highly about Journalists like me, that's for sure. What about like uh, James O'Keefe? In Project Veritas, I mean, he's got a special place in hell. But the thing about these, these people is that they, they, it's funny, they're being recorded, but they don't know that they're being recorded, and sometimes it's really funny. You ever heard of the Veritas Project? Yeah, that's true. Like the one on the door. Huh? The what? The Veritas Project. Project, Project, or Project, Project Veritas. Veritas? No, what is that? It's basically, um, Republican spy group that likes to go into places and try and just like record people doing stupid. Yeah. Do they think you're that stupid? Yeah. 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 They yeah. actually do. Wow. Yeah. They, but because, like, uh, unfortunately, people fall for that. No, people, people fall for it. People fall for it. But they won't. They won't. They'll do anything. They'll break any law. They don't believe in laws. They don't believe in justice. They'll break, they'll cross any line. Don't take my word for it. 2020 is a political revolution. I am going to do everything morally acceptable to win. I will lie, I will cheat, I will steal because that's morally acceptable in this <laughs> political environment. So, so I go visit with this guy and pull my best Dateline NBC Chris Hansen impersonation and talk to him. He's wearing a mask of the congressperson that he works for, even though he claims he didn't work for anybody in the Democratic Party, and let's hear what he has to say. Why do you think that's morally acceptable in this environment, to lie, cheat, and steal? Yes, I will lie to people who lie to us. I will cheat people who cheat us. Oh, and I stand by everything that I say. This guy might be the first person in Project Veritas history that actually stands by his remarks and doesn't change his tune, but there's, a, there's an obsession with these people, I, I don't even know, they'll never tell me how they're going to do the fraud. That's the problem. How do you cheat? What type of cheating are we going to be doing in this election? I, I can't answer that question. No, they can't. They can't answer that. And they're obsessed with chopping people's heads off. A lot of young people, a lot of young Americans against socialism who don't know about these guillotines, these crazy people. They're obsessed with violence. Guillotine. Obsessed. That's all I gotta say. Option A. What I'm proposing, option two, slicey boys. Slicey boys. I don't even know what that is. I mean, they're, they're literally obsessed. 
Why the obsession with guillotines? <laughs> it, it is a readily known symbol for anybody who has been in any sort of political and revolutionary talk. You know, it's funny, they never practice what they preach, interestingly enough. That's a really nice car, man. That's a really expensive car. All right, let's talk about some voter fraud, right? Because voter fraud doesn't exist. Let's go to New Hampshire. Apparently there was a guy in New Hampshire who voted both as a woman and a man at the same address. We spoke with this person and he admitted to us that he voted twice. But I got in trouble because I voted twice and the cops found out because I went to get the voter ID, right? He said it's not a big priority, but you know, uh, or it could be freaking shoved under a bunch of papers and forgot about. Who said that? The cop. Now apparently the government knew about this for a year but didn't prosecute him until we recorded him. This is a picture of the person. He dressed up like a woman. <laughs> And, you know, I, I, I walked into the attorney general's office with a copy of the videotape asking, this guy created a voter ID card for a person that doesn't exist, and the attorney general said this to me. Did he create a fake voter ID card that you're aware of? I'm not aware of there being a voter card in the state of New Hampshire. I'm not even aware that there's a voter ID card? And you're the top deputy in the attorney general's office that handles this issue? I spoke with his boss. There is a voter ID card in the state of New Hampshire. He confirmed there is an ID card, and they prosecuted this guy the next day. They arrested him for double voting. Now, now what's interesting is the powers that be always seek to investigate me, not the people that vote twice. In fact, the investigator in New Hampshire, this guy named Richard Tracy, handed me a criminal grand jury subpoena, not this, this person that voted twice. I had to do a double take again because Richard Tracy, this guy's name was actually Dick Tracy, investigator. Now, there are a lot of dicks that come after Project Veritas. This guy was the Attorney General of New Hampshire in 2013. His name, I'm not making this up, was Richard Head. The guy's name was actually Dick Head. Which, a fact that he disguises with a middle initial, I guess, to try to... I mean, this guy actually sort of looks like a, uh, like a dickhead. <laughs> but it's very important that you, you, don't, you don't be intimidated when they come after you. You run towards the fire, you don't back down, you double down, you keep releasing videos. There's actually a chapter in my first book called The Rise of Dickhead. I encourage you to read that. On to Texas, San Antonio, Texas, where they say there's no voter fraud. But there's no voter fraud. But this person, Raquel Rodriguez, talks about how you can buy votes. Listen to this. $5,000 up front, 5000 That's right. Cash. Cash. When you do things like this for votes, mm -hmm. you're talking between 5 to $8 per vote. I'm just letting you know, so mm -hmm. you have an idea. And I'm going to bring 3500 to the to the plate. Okay. County by. What I do in picking up the balance when he was with me, that's illegal. I could go to jail. She could go to jail, she says, so I confront this woman. And the funny thing about this confrontation is she has all the illegal stuff on her possession, and, and she's trying to hide it while I'm talking to her. She's like, no, no, don't look at that. I don't want to put this away. I don't want you to see what I'm doing. Now, I also talked to this guy who, I guess, worked with her. This guy's actually a Republican. We'll go after anybody who's committing corruption. Democrats or Republicans. Now this guy, I'm at some political rally in Texas, and this guy runs away from me the moment he gets to the rally. Do you not know who Raquel Rodriguez is? He's ignoring us, and I'm not going to stop. And then he runs back to his campaign bus, and to my shock, he drives the bus away, but he leaves all of his campaign staffers at the rally. And they're pissed because they got left there by her boss. This woman asked me for like a ride home after she got no, no, left no, at the place. I don't know, I didn't mean to get your ride home. Just, I'm, just, I'm just asking questions. My job is to ask questions. Sometimes people don't answer them. Let's, you want me to give you a ride? You want me to get you an Uber? I don't know if I can, that's an illegal campaign We're not gonna break the law of Project Veritas. Let's go to Minnesota, Mike Lindell's state. Now, you know, they say voter fraud doesn't exist. Voter fraud is not possible. There's no such thing as voter fraud. The director of the FBI said 
there's no such thing as voter fraud. Well, how about this videotape? A man in a car covered in ballots. If you were writing a South Park episode, you could not come up with a more outrageous example of voter fraud in numbers Minnesota. Don't lie. Numbers 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 don't lie. The guy is bragging about all the ballot harvesting he is doing. He posted it to his Snapchat. I didn't record him. He recorded himself. He record, he record, there's no evidence, there's no evidence. No evidence. So, of course, our friends at the wonderful New York Times says that this video is part of a coordinated disinformation campaign. A coordinated disinformation campaign making claims without evidence. You have a video of a man in a car with absentee ballots all over the place. It's illegal to have more than three in your possession. But the New York Times says, no evidence of voter fraud. This is how awful these people are in the media. This is why we must fight the media, which I will tell you how I'm going to do that in a minute. We have a videotape of them giving money in exchange for absentee ballots. <laughs> This is, you can see the cash exchange, but the New York Times says, allegations come solely from unnamed people who speak with Project Veritas, whose faces are not shown. In the video, you clearly see a man, there is the ballot harvester's face, you clearly see the voter, there's his face, and you even see the money being exchanged, but the New York Times says, whose faces are not shown? It's like out of George Orwell's 1984. It's like black is white, truth is ignorance. They're literally stating the opposite of reality. The New York Times is tampering with reality. You can see the ballots. You can hear their voices saying that what they're doing is illegal. You can hear Osman al Dakan say he doesn't care that he's breaking the law. That's illegal, why? We don't care illegal. I have lies. How much I It's a good one. I mean, and, and the New York Times concludes that this doesn't prove voter fraud. I want you to know who you're dealing with here. The only thing that's going to convince them is video tape. Oh, and then they conclude probably part of a probably part of a coordinate. They didn't have the balls to say it was, they said it was probably part of a coordinated disinformation campaign, but this reverberated throughout the mainstream media. They recycled this New York Times hit piece. A video claiming there is massive voter fraud in Minnesota has now video can't claim anything. It's an inanimate recording, but we'll continue with this Fox 9 episode. It's now been seen more than a million times on YouTube. But tonight you will hear for the first time from the man at the center of those allegations who says the group behind that report, Project Veritas, isn't telling you the truth. But all of this fits the Project Veritas MO, according to Stanford researchers, who say it appears to be a coordinated disinformation campaign. James O'Keefe meeting with Trump's Minnesota campaign chair, Mike Lindahl of MyPillow fame, right before the story was rushed out to compete with the New York Times blockbuster on President Trump's income taxes. Now, they claim that because we met with Mike Lindell one or two days prior to the release, that it's a coordinated disinformation campaign. By the way, the New York Times tax return story didn't cite one source, didn't have one document. They didn't show any recordings whatsoever. And they had the balls to say that I use unidentified sources? That's rich. And they say, I'm probably doing coordinated disinformation. This guy, I encourage you, tweeted him and tell him, give him a piece of your mind, sat down and interviewed the bank robber. Basically said, so what is your side of the story, Mr. Bank Robber Criminal who committed all the fraud? Um, those $200 was for a sick kid that lived in Somalia. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the $200 was for a sick child in Somalia. Let's just run that with fact. Let's just take his word for it. Let's be the paragon of investigative journalism and just interview the criminal on the record and broadcast to the masses what he tells us to be true. And USA Today, that crappy publication, cross-cited the New York Times and said that, yes, indeed, this was a coordinated disinformation campaign. And Facebook.com, which works with USA Today to fact check, labeled all the posts of the Minnesota video as disinformation because they work with USA Today. And before you know it, you have information on Facebook saying that our video was false information. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what they do, and this is how they do it. And you have two choices in this life. You can give up, you can quit, you can cry, you can despair, or you can fight the bastards. And you know what? That's why, that is why 
we decided to sue the New York Times. We're going to sue the shit out of them. And we're going to win. If it costs us a million, two million, three million, whatever it costs, because we hide from nothing, we run from nothing, we don't plead the fifth, we don't back down. And Project Veritas has never actually lost a lawsuit. You know why? Because we don't surrender, because we don't compromise, because we don't give them an inch. And we sued the FBI and won in a week. They put me on, they wouldn't allow me to buy a firearm. They put me on a false NICS list. We have the best lawyers money can buy. This is Jamie Dean. He's great. He's a blind guy. He's a blind man, but he's a phenomenal lawyer. He's such a good guy that when we won in federal court in North Carolina, he, he's blind, but he carried my, my stuff down the stairs for me, which is very nice of him. Now, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And at Project Veritas, we have all these whistleblowers, these brave people that now come to us from the inside. I got started in this by getting a message from a girl on Facebook. What can I do? You hear the question every day. What can I do? Hannah Giles, 11 years ago, sent me a message on Facebook and said, James, I never met this girl before. She said, you know, I'd like to go into Acorn dressed as a prostitute. Usually you delete messages like this when you get them from random strangers. But I said, you know what? That's a good idea. There needs to be a pimp in this situation. She said, let's go do it. We walked into an office with a hidden camera embedded in my satin tie and recorded these workers telling us how to declare the underage prostitutes as dependents on our tax reform, tax return. Is it against the law in Maryland? Prostitution? Prostitution? And they have an agreement. Anything that the government's having our money from is always against the law. Let me make sure there's a code for it, okay? A code for prostitution? You might have to name it something else. Performance arts, let's see. Independent artists. You could be that. Dancing? It's not dancing, trust me. Um, but dancing is considered an art. I mean, you know, the... Um, did, right. Sex is kind of like dancing, right? Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Your business is a performing artist. A performing artist. But you are. Okay? So okay. you're not lying. So stop saying busted. Got it. Or you could refer to yourself as a genital contractor. <laughs> Used vagina salesman. That wasn't the only office. Every office we went in, they told us how to lie and cover up from the cops. In this office, they figured my girlfriend was a prostitute. My girlfriend's a prostitute. Okay. And I don't know if... I kind of figured that. Yeah, especially what she was wearing, you know, was I'm using obvious. the money that she's getting, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, but when the police ask you, you don't know where it's coming from. It's uh, what we're trying to tell you. All right. We're looking out for you. These Acorn workers were looking out for the criminals. This was us. Two kids with nothing but a video camera and also a YouTube account. You know who broke this story? These two. You're telling me the two kids from the cast of High School Musical 3 can break this story with a video camera and their grandmother's chinchilla coat and you got nothing? It actually was my grandmother's chinchilla coat. <laughs> now, politics is downstream from culture. Culture is downstream from information. This led to a South Park episode. It's a kissing company. And you're making a profit. Oh, sure. My black employee, Charisse, over there, one time she made $2,000 on one customer. All right, get out of here. Huh? What? I'm not falling for it. But I heard Acorn helps pension their bitches. So, after this came out, the House of Representatives voted to defund Acorn. The Senate of the United States, democratically controlled, voted 83 to 7 to defund Acorn. This happened in one week, and President, then President Obama signed legislation to defund How about the Acorn. Funding for Acorn. You know, it's frankly, it's not really something I followed closely. I didn't even know that Acorn was getting uh, uh, a whole lot of federal money. What the Senate and the House have voted to cut it off. You know, what I know is is that what I saw on that video was certainly inappropriate. Certainly inappropriate. Now, they like to lie about me. They like to attack us. They said that we went after Acorn because they register black people. And the late Andrew Breitbart and I got a retraction from the Washington Post. It was a great retraction. It was the first of its kind. We've gotten over 330 retractions from media outlets. Andrew and I were sitting in a hotel room one night, Andrew Breitbart, the late Andrew Breitbart, he says, there needs to be a mascot for these retractions. Maybe an animal, like a, like a mascot, like a, like a monkey or an elephant, like a, like a, no, how about a llama? No, 
How about an alpaca? <laughs> and then retracto, the correction alpaca was born. Q, the retracto theme song. Let's get serious. I don't think it'll break. You gotta have fun. You gotta fight back. Now, get serious for a minute. The Brave Insider is inside CNN. We have so many people on the inside of these institutions, all right? CNN, New York Times. One of the people inside CNN gave us the dial in and got access to all of Jeff Sucker's 9 a.m. calls. And we live streamed the president of CNN's phone calls. Hey, Jeff Sucker, are you there? Hey, yes. this is James O'Keefe. Uh, we've been listening to your CNN calls for basically two months, uh, recording everything. Um, just wanted to ask you some questions if you have a minute. Um, do you still feel you're the most trusted name in news? Because I have to say, from what I've been hearing on these phone calls, I don't know about that. I mean, we got a lot of recordings that indicate you're not really that uh, independent of a, of a journalist. Okay. Um, thank you for uh, thank you for uh, your comments. Um, so, everybody, in light of that, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll set up a, a, a new system and we'll uh, we'll be back with you. We'll do the rest of the call uh, a little bit later. You might have heard the man defecate on camera there for a minute. Uh, Jeff Zucker, president of CNN, being live streamed his 9 a.m. calls. We recorded two months of these calls, and one of the insiders who worked with Kerry Porch described why he decided to blow the whistle on CNN. I decided to wear the camera because I didn't see any other option. When I came to work at CNN, I mean, it was my dream job, and that dream actually just turned into a nightmare. Now, I'm proud to say that the CNN insider is actually here today, Carrie, would you come on stage? How's it going, Turning Point? Thank you. James. All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not betray CNN. CNN betrayed me, they betrayed you, they betrayed the American people when they abandon their journalistic mission. Now, ladies, gentlemen, and future leaders of this great republic, this moment in space and time right now is our 1776. The new battle for our republic is the war over information. The battle over whom is allowed to see what at what given time. This is our fight. Truth is now subjective. Hashtag 1984. We need you. Be brave. Do something. Thanks, Kerry. <laughs> but that wasn't the only insider. Sometimes you meet men who walk amongst giants. This man, Erie, Pennsylvania, United States postal worker, contacted us and said he saw them backdate absentee ballots. They backdated ballots before Election Day, and he blew the whistle. And I heard him say to the supervisor that they messed up yesterday. That they, and I was, so I was like, oh, what did they mess up on? And uh, he told the, the supervisor that um, they had uh, postmarked one of the pallet for the fourth instead of the third. They actually were supposed heard to them hit, say uh, this. For third. And he told us they said it, and then they sent federal agents from the FBI Inspector General to coerce him to change his story. 
they had no interest in investigating voter fraud. They were trying to get him to change his mind, these deep state agents, and thank God Richard had a recording device in his pocket and recorded two hours of that meeting. Listen to this. I, I, I'm not, well, I am actually. I am trying to twist you a little bit because in that, believe it or not, your mind will kick in. I'm not scaring you, but I am scaring you. They're trying to scare him, twist him. This is the manifestation of the deep state, but Richard released those recordings. I mean, he was scared. They were trying to change his story. They, they were grilling the hell out of me. How are you feeling right now? I'm kind of pissed. I feel like I just got played. Richard actually had to deal with the Washington Post getting leaked, the, something he signed. He didn't even know what he signed. They said that anonymous sources had worked with them. There's only two anonymous sources, the people that he recorded. And Richard told me on the record that our war is not overseas. He said, as a veteran, as a combat Marine, Richard Hopkins, mailman, told me that our war is here. I was in Afghanistan and Iraq. Two tours in, in the, while I was in the Marines. I was a Marine in five, for five years. And uh, I'll tell you all, I'd rather be out back in Afghanistan getting shot at by Afghans, honest to God than, you know, having to be in this kind of position. Um, so you basically aren't working right now? Nope. I've actually had my mother-in-law call me and be like crying, if you need anywhere to live. And I was like, I thought, I, I thought you hated me. My daughter's four, so she doesn't know anything about this. She doesn't understand this. this mm -hmm. isn't, but I'm hoping that someday she's proud of me for what I'm, I'm doing here. Celebrity, a celebrity is a big name, but a hero is a big man. And sometimes you get a chance to meet giants amongst men, anonymous heroes, who ask for nothing, who ask for none of this, but exist to serve a higher purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Hopkins, now unemployed, is here. In 2007, I uh, swore an oath to protect the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And when I joined the post office and I began working with them, they also made me do a similar oath. So when I overheard my own postmaster breaking that oath, it disgusted me. So I felt I needed to say something. And I feel you don't even need an oath to keep to be able to see something and say something. So if you can, if it happens for you and you see something, say it. I was enough. All of you could be to do this. Every one of you has a camera. Your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your mothers, your parents, your friends can blow the whistle. You are the future. Only you will do it, not the politicians. To quote the late Maya Angelou, they can shoot us with their words. They can cut us with their eyes. They can kill us with their hatefulness. But still, like air, we rise. We rise. We rise.